Okay, it's really hot out today. It's like 90 degrees out, but I wanted to make a quick video on anchor points and uh, just touch base on a couple of things real quick. I had my friend's wife come over the other day. Um, they're from Jersey. They actually only shot the, shot the bow and arrow a few times at my house and in their backyard. And uh, she's petite. She has a 24 inch raw length and a 20 pound bow. So she's only pulling like 10, 15 pounds. And they really like to shoot 3D tournaments. So I found some ranges for them to check out in Jersey. They're going to go check them out. And um, in order to get her to reach, usually the furthest targets are like 25 yards. And um, with the arrows that uh, I gave them, the uh, 700 spine arrows, you know, obviously at her draw length, they're a little too stiff and a little too heavy. But I had some eastern arrows that were given to me and I fletched that were 900 spine. And uh, I had it shooting with the top finger to corner of the mouth to get more range. And it wasn't just quite getting it. So sometimes it's okay to come up with a different anchor, one that's maybe not the standard or the norm. As long as it works and it's solid. If you take your finger and go right here between your lip and your chin, you'll feel your gum line under your teeth. If you slide back in that little trench of your underneath your gum line, you can feel all the little bumps from your teeth, you know, the gums go around it. And you can actually stop either in between or on top of one of the bumps and have a, uh, a lower anchor, which gives you more trajectory, okay? And uh, doing that with her actually got her out to 25 yards. She had to put those light little arrows out of that, whatever it was, 12 pounds or whatever came out the, on top of the deer target's back and they would drop in. They would drop it in really well. So Olympic arches, they go under their jawline and as they release, they slide their hand along the jaw, okay? And that gets them out there. They use a the sight, gets them out there pretty far, okay? But if you watch the slow motion videos of them, you can actually see that when they release and slide their hand along their jaw, they maintain that pressure, which is what I tell everybody with whatever draw you have, they maintain, let me hold this for a minute, it's getting so, um, They maintain pressure along their draw, jaw, their face, their cheek, whatever it is. Okay, so once again, the Olympic arches they elbow all the way back okay if your elbows all the way back everything's in line okay okay if your elbows all the way back okay your arms in line the arrows in line the bow is in line okay and when you release with back tension it's a back tension once again it's a 30 degree wrap of your elbow in other words it goes down and around that's it it's like as if you you under it oh, and stretched okay and another thing is that the term, you hear the term sometimes, um, anchor, draw anchor and expand and release. Well, all that expand is, is once you're back, right? And you're gonna do that 30 degree twist to, right? You're, you're stretching, you're squeezing your back and you're expanding your chest. So that's what it is. You squeeze your back muscles once you're all the way back and expand your chest okay once again when you're all the way back if somebody was to push on this arm your whole body should turn because you can't go no further back you know you really can't pull back you really can't do anything with it other than if you want to move it you have to use that squeeze your shoulder blades and it's a 30 degree 30 degree downward angle okay kind of wraps around the back the elbow goes around see okay so for um, you know for gap shooting I use a uh, top finger to the corner of my mouth I use it for hunting heavy arrows and all and the reason I use the corner of my mouth with the heavy arrows I'm able to go back 25 yards and I can shoot consistent all day 25 yards but if I'm hunting I, my shots are usually 20 or less, okay? Even just because I can go back further doesn't mean I'll take a shot. Too many things could happen. Deer could step, 
too many things could happen, okay? So if you have a repeatable anchor that maybe isn't the norm, but it works, stick with it. You know, sometimes you have to get range. When I used to teach the Olympic, junior Olympic kids, you know, we'd have little kids there with the Olympic bows. And what we would do is take that, their sight, and actually, just so you know, compound guys too, you wonder why that big bar is on the front of your, uh, on your sight. If you move it closer back to the riser, you get more range out of it. So we used to do with the little Olympic, with the Olymp junior Olympic kids, it looks weird and everything else, and you don't, don't worry about anybody say anything. You flip it around and have it right up against the riser. And that brings it a little closer to you and you're able to adjust the sight. You just gotta watch the arrow when it goes that it don't hit the bottom of the sight. But you could put it behind the riser to get, you know, flip it upside down, change it around so you can get a little further range with it. But what we do is I'm into the 3D and hunting, okay? So for 3D, I gap shoot. And uh, because I have uh, this damage, I have this damage, and I have nerve damage. When I come all the way back, okay, I'm conscious of my back tension. I feel it, but I keep my hand against my face, and I release. I don't go back, okay? Uh, there was a time in my life where I was getting shots in my, the muscles in my shoulder blades because I was having knots and spasms and that prevented me from shooting. So, okay. So you never want to creep forward. Always keep tension all the way back, okay? When you release, whether it's static, I, I got pressure here, release, okay? Be a shooting machine, keep your arm up. Or whether you use back tension, watch my elbow, see how it goes down, okay? Um, a lot of archery programs teach you to go all the way back if you can. And that's a follow through. Um, you know, that's what they teach, a follow through. But it's totally unnecessary, um, you know, for a 3D and hunting. You, once you, uh, you're at anchor and you go back a little bit, you go back an inch or two and the arrow's gone and clear. But to have a follow through and a repeatable shot, and so you don't release like a trigger, you know, like automatically, like as soon as you touch anchor, you release. What you do is you follow through. So release and go back a little bit if you're using back tension, okay? All right, I think that's really all I wanted to tell you on this hot day. You see me shoot before, there's no sense of me shooting. But I wanted to discuss that anchor. I've used that anchor a couple of times throughout my life. And it's something that's not the norm. When people say, oh, what are you doing? Well, this channel here with the gums underneath your teeth, and you can feel it. You can feel all these teeth. The one thing I want to talk about is if you go to the top of your head, on your top of your jaw, your skull here, right, the top of your jaw, and you touch a tooth, well, that really don't move if you move your jaw, okay? But if you go to the corner of your mouth or down here, or like Olympic, see what happens to your hand when you move your mouth? It goes up and down. So my only suggestion is when you come to anchor, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure you heard this before. Keep your mouth shut. Okay, don't put a lot of pressure. You know, because you, you put pressure on your jaw, you get that TMJ and, it, and it'll hurt. Just close your mouth. Feel it closed. Feel your top teeth and bottom teeth that they're closed. Draw back. Touch anchor and release. Okay. And uh, so that's it. Okay. Whatever works for you. Be consistent, keep your mouth shut, not too much pressure, you don't want to get TMJ, and uh, have a repeatable anchor, okay? Keep shooting. Too hot for me to be out here, 90 something degrees. I'm going to go jump in the pool. Have a good day, keep shooting, watch my other videos on Bambo Jump. Okay, it's so nice to be out of that heat, but there's one thing that I wanted to mention to you. Like when uh, my friends came over, and I gave my friend's wife those 900 spine arrows to shoot out of that little bow. It's probably around 15 pounds or so at her draw length that I happen to have. I told her husband, you know, who had a 27 pound bow, 
I says, don't shoot these arrows. Don't let anybody shoot these arrows but her. Because if you have one of these really light, weak spine arrows, and somebody comes along and they say, oh, let me shoot that and see how far it goes or how it works. It's so light, the spine, so weak, that if you shoot it and it flexes and snaps, it could go through somebody's wrist. Okay, so be mindful of short drawer arrows. Be mindful of weaker spine arrows. You have kids, don't let anybody shoot their arrows. Okay, always check to make sure that the arrows are long enough, okay? Make sure that the arrows are long enough, that they're not gonna go through anybody's wrist, and make sure that the spines are really close. Don't use a super weak spine on somebody else's bow, because you're gonna have problems, okay? And that's it. I hope the video was okay. I was dying out there. It was like bacon in an oven. So, um, just wanna to touch base that there are different anchors, and whatever works for you, just have be repeatable, okay? Have good back tension or alignment, okay? Keep shooting. Watch my other videos on Bebo Joe. Thank you.